Hello and welcome to Church at Home. I'm Philip and this is Alison and we're so pleased that you are with us today. If this is your first time with us or if you're a regular, we're so pleased that you have joined us and we pray that we will have a great time together. Later on we're going to be taking communion together so make sure that you have your bread and wine ready. Well it's the first Sunday in May and if you were a regular with us at City Church you will know that that means that it's birthday Sunday. So before we hand over to James and Louise to lead us in some worship, Naomi and Kelly it's over to you. So um, Kel, tell me again, why have we dressed up like this? We're celebrating VE Day. I said we're celebrating May birthdays, not VE Day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my word. Anyways, as well as celebrating VE Day, we just want to wish everyone who has a birthday in May um, a happy birthday. And especially Clive, who has his 75th birthday this month as well. So God bless you. And Baba, we just pray your blessing over everyone who has a birthday in May um, this year. I pray that you would increase in them, Lord, and that they would know you like they've not known you before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye bye. bye. Yeah. 
morning church. My name is Jay Extents, also known as the husband of Helen and father of Evan and Morgan. Today I'm going to be reading to you from Psalm 100 verses 1 to 5. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Jay, thanks for that Bible reading. Within that psalm, we were encouraged to come with thanksgiving and praise. So let's do that now as we continue to worship.
We're going to go back into worship in a minute, but before we do that, I just wonder if you could close your eyes with me and we're just going to pray together for a minute. Lord, I thank you that you're always working for our good. Lord, I thank you that you're always moving and doing things in situations to bring the best outcome. And we've just sang some really incredible lyrics up from the ashes, hope will arise. And Lord, I pray that in the ashes that people are facing, Lord, that hope would arise in, in places that feel like we're defeated, in places that feel like we haven't got the best outcome. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would bring hope to the surface in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, and in our communities, Lord, that your hope would prevail, your life would prevail, that your victory would prevail, Lord Jesus. And at home, I just, um, I wonder if you could pray with me for the people who are our key workers. Lord, we bring these people to you, Lord, the people on the NHS, the people who are our key workers, Lord, that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them, that you would be their guide, that you would be their peace, that you would be their victory as they face another week, Lord, as they prepare to go into, into whatever situation, Lord, that you would be with them that you would almost be like ammunition that they're taking in with them to the workplace, Lord. And God, I pray for everybody in our City Church family, from the youngest to the oldest, Lord, whatever stage of life we're in, I pray that this week we would know you deeper. Lord Jesus, that you would be our strength. Lord Jesus, that you would be our hope. And I pray for everybody, Lord, that we would know your peace today, that we would know your victory today, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. His power in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story ends Yes, I know how this story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle below
Last week we started a new series from the New Testament book of Philippians titled Life in Lockdown. Michael shared with us that Paul who wrote the book, he wrote it while he was in prison, was choosing to live beyond his lockdown. He made three choices. He was choosing to remember, encourage and pray for others. Today we're looking at how Paul was able to live beyond his lockdown by having a greater perspective, a godly perspective on his circumstance. He saw the fact that God was bigger, that God was at work in what appeared to be an impossible situation. We're going to read together. We're going to turn to Philippians 1 verses 12 to 19. It says then, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear that throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defence of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Paul, as we already know, was in jail in Rome and he is there after being framed for a crime that he didn't commit. He spent two years in Caesarea and then he appealed his case to Rome and everyone knew about Paul's arrest. The Philippians who the letter was written to was asking, well Paul how are you holding up? We're concerned about you and my first question to us today is how are we holding up in lockdown? Paul's situation was threatening his perspective and what we are facing, some of the challenges, some of the challenges that we have can threaten our perspective. Paul was isolated from friends and family. He was under house arrest so people could have visited him but you know many stayed away. It would have been a lonely time for Paul. And I know for many of us, what we're facing at the moment is a lonely time. Paul was also unable to do what he loved doing. This is our seventh week in lockdown. And, uh, you know, for Paul, he faced that lockdown and, and he was prevented from doing those things that he loved doing. He was kept from preaching in the synagogue and teaching in the churches for over two years. He was unable to debate with the learned men of the city. This was Paul's passion. This was where he shone. He couldn't do what he enjoyed most. It was a bit like a a musician that is unable to play their instrument or sing their song. It's like an artist that is 
and able to paint. And we're facing those frustrations too. Maybe it's not that we're able to gather on Sundays. We're missing that. It could be the fact that we can't play football on a Saturday or, or go to rugby. Not being able to go to the gym daily. We're missing those dance classes. And to clarify, I don't go to any dance classes. Maybe it's walks in your favourite beauty spots. It's time with the family. It's good we've got it on Zoom, but it's the physical touch, isn't it? Not being able to go to our favourite restaurants. Paul also had a loss, also had a loss of, of that sense of personal freedom. Paul was chained to a Roman guard by a short chain at the wrist all the time. He had no privacy at all. Even the most private acts were witnessed by the guard. Every private word was shared by the guard. How demeaning, how dehumanising was the things that, that Paul was going through. He writes in 2 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 29 of similar situations that, that he had gone through. He had been in prison frequently. He'd been flogged on many times severely. He'd experienced and he had been close to death again and again. From the Jews he had received lashes, he had been whipped. Three times he had been beaten with, uh, with rods. Once he was pelted with stones. Three times he was shipwrecked. This guy had gone through so much but despite all these challenges, Paul chooses to live beyond his lockdown. He has that godly perspective. He has that greater perspective. He knew that God was at work in the bigger picture. And for you and I, in, our, in the picture of our lives, God is at work. Even though Paul was in lockdown, even though he was chained up in lockdown, he knew that God was with him. Today, God is with us. You may feel chained this morning because of a serious illness. You may be worried about your finances. Maybe it's an emotional struggle that you are battling. It can be relationship challenges that you're facing. You may feel as if you're walking constantly under a dark cloud. I just want to encourage you today that God is with you, God is for you and God will deliver you. God will deliver you. Have that greater perspective I encourage you. Have that godly perspective. Look at life beyond your lockdown. In the opening verses that we Read, we see how Paul was delighted that even though he was in chains, the gospel was advancing. What may seem like a, a setback to us, God can work in, God can advance his kingdom through. And Paul realised this. Paul wasn't grumbling. He isn't pleading his case. He's not bitter. He's not discouraged. But Paul is declaring in the middle of his circumstances that God is using them for his glory. Today, let's declare in our circumstances that God is using them for his good. Within the verses that we've read, we see two benefits that Paul has because of his circumstances. The first one is this, the palace guard were hearing the gospel. These palace guards were a group of elite soldiers. They were stationed in Rome and Paul was bound to one of these men, as we know, with a short chain. And every four hours, the guard would change. Instead of being bitter about this invasion of his personal privacy, Paul sees it as an opportunity. Paul realised that he wasn't chained to the guards, but the guards were chained to him. Paul had a captive 
audience. For four hours at a time, Paul could talk to these men about Jesus Christ. In 24 hours alone, six guys heard the gospel from Paul. His witness was effective. Paul remarks that because of his imprisonment, the gospel of Jesus Christ was being preached throughout the palace guard. The gospel was reaching high places of authority. At the moment, we're doing life pretty closely with family. We have that relationship maybe that we didn't have before with, with neighbours. Let's pray that in all that we're doing, Christ is seen in us. That they are seeing Jesus in the way that we live, in the way that we do life. The second benefit then that Paul had because of his lockdown was, was this. He was seeing the people of God declare the gospel fearlessly and boldly. Fearlessly and boldly. And God used Paul's situation to light a fire under some of the other believers. They were encouraged to carry on Paul's work, Paul's ministry, while he was in chains. Which I think is, is brilliant. They were doing the work that he was unable to do himself. They were inspired by Paul's example. The message was being proclaimed, it was bold, it was strong. The work of God was continuing. And for us at the moment, our buildings may be closed, but church is very much open. And we can see it with other church ministries. The gospel is being proclaimed across our nation, which is absolutely brilliant. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been using the Church Online platform. And this enables us to stream our morning service, our kids service to, to you. And uh, it's being used by other churches globally. And the people that created this software said that in the opening weeks, over 90,000 people made first time commitments for Christ. That's the work of God advancing in lockdown and I think that is absolutely brilliant. His work continues. God is not limited by lockdown. The two benefits that Paul experienced came about because of principles that he had playing that he that he was working out in his life and the first principle is this. Though he couldn't control his circumstances he could control the way he responded to his circumstance we don't have to despair in the tough times we don't have to hibernate Paul made the choice to choose God Paul reminds us that whether a difficult circumstance defeats us or whether it deepens our faith will depend on how we respond it is so natural for us to feel sorry for ourselves. It's natural for us to wonder, why is this happening to me? But I want to encourage you this morning, like Paul, let's choose to be joyful. Where happiness depends on happenings, let's choose our joy in God. Because he gives us joy in every season. At church, we love to sing the song, We Say Yes. And the opening line of that is, we choose to serve you. And I want to encourage you to choose God. So choose a God who is sovereign. Let's trust him. Let's put our hope in him today. He is working out everything for our good, despite the pain. Christ can enable us to live and to live joyfully. Secondly, we see that the principle Paul put in place was he looked for opportunities in challenging circumstances. He looked for opportunities in challenging 
circumstances. Paul saw that even though he was chained to the guard, it was his moment to share the gospel with people that he would never come into contact with. He used his chains as a teaching tool to strengthen others. At this time, let's take the opportunity to strengthen and encourage others. It could be that phone call. It could be that text message. It makes a massive difference when we can connect and encourage. Paul was choosing to dig deeper rather than to be swept away by his circumstance. And for you and I, while we're in lockdown, we've got some opportunities that we can take hold of. Then the first is this. Let's take the time to do the, the writing, the reading and the praying that we've always wanted to do. Maybe we want to save some money. We've got an opportunity now to save that money that, that we need to put away. Let's see it as a challenge to find contentment and joy in the things that don't cost any money. Maybe you're not happy about your fitness. We've got some opportunities now, haven't we, just to get some exercise programs in place that we can continue beyond lockdown. Maybe you're frustrated that you're not having time together as a family. I want to encourage you Now's the time to, to get together and to have some good moments, whether it's around board games or watching a film. But take time as a family for one another. If you are ill at the moment, I want to encourage you to let the Lord minister his peace, his strength and his healing power into your life. For all of us, it's those moments where we can be still and know that we are God. But particularly if you're poorly, take the moment to be still and know that he is God. And even through that, friends, look at ways in which you can minister to others. And the final principle I want to share with you is this. Paul realised in all that he had gone through that God was not a disappointment. And I want to encourage you, God will not disappoint us. He will not let us down. He is with us. People can let us down. Circumstances can let us down. You may be frustrated that you haven't been able to complete your GCSEs or your A-levels or, or coursework. Maybe it's the fact that your wedding plans have been scuppered. You could be frustrated you're not going on that hot holiday that you've been waiting for. It could be that you're concerned about your work and being put on furlough. Whatever we're facing, I want you to be encouraged that, and I want you to know that God is not a disappointment. He will not let us down. Paul says in Philippians 1 verses 18 to 19, he has this approach. He says, yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and through God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Paul had that assurance that God would deliver him. So I encourage you today, as I encourage myself, let's live beyond lockdown with that godly perspective, with that greater perspective. I really do believe that as we do that, we will be astounded by what God has done and by what God will do in the days ahead. As I close, I pray that even though you cannot control your circumstance, that you will respond to God in this moment. And I just encourage you now, where you are in your circumstances, with what you are facing, take the opportunity to respond to your heavenly Father. 
Lord, we respond to you. We choose you. We pray that you would fill us with your joy. I pray that in the days ahead that you will see opportunities arise in these challenging times and that you will seize those opportunities and that you will know the blessing of the opportunities that God will give to us. And finally, I pray for you. I pray over your family that you will know the blessing and the experience of the God that never disappoints us, that never lets us down. In Jesus' name, amen.
We're now going to take communion together. During the Last Supper in Matthew 26, we read that, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. In a moment, we're going to do that too. And as we do, can we encourage you not to rush through this, but to take some time to really think about what Jesus did for us. Think about how he lived a perfect and blameless life, and yet he was punished for our sins in order that we may receive complete forgiveness. As you take the bread, remember how his body was broken for us. And as you drink from the cup, remember how his blood poured out for us in order that we may be washed clean. So now we're going to eat the bread, we're going to drink from the cup, and we're going to remember. First John chapter 2 and verse 2 tells us that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours but also for the sins of the whole world. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. And finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 tells us that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so let's keep in mind that whilst we remember what Jesus did for us, with thanksgiving in our hearts, that we don't need to be full of sorrow, but rather we are able to be filled with joy as we think about the finished work of Jesus, that he has freely forgiven us from our sins, that by his wounds we are healed, and that because of him we have become righteous in the sight of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for what you did for us on the cross. We thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made for us. We can never begin to express what that has meant for us. We can't put into words what you did for us. The pain you went through the suffering that you experienced, how you were humiliated and killed all for our sake. Lord, I thank you that you gave us a gift that no amount of money can buy. You gave us a gift that no amount of hard work could ever earn for us. You gave us something that we could never do for ourselves, and that is that you gave us forgiveness of our sins and that you gave us the gift of eternal life and so Lord we just say thank you thank you so much for all that you have done for us and may we never forget what it is that you did thank you Jesus thank you that we are righteous 
in the sight of God, not because of our own doing, but because of your finished work. I thank you that your word says that we have been, through you, through Christ, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We thank you that in you we have life, and life in all its fullness. We thank you for everything that we have received through your finished work. Amen. Dan and Bobby, thank you so much for leading us in communion. Guys, before we go, we just want to encourage you to stay connected. Yep, don't forget, we have our daily Lift It Mat sessions at 9.30. On Tuesday at 7.30, we've got the Bible study with Graham Murray. And at the same time, we've also got Young Adults happening with Chloe and Joseph. Wacky Wednesday is happening on Wednesday with our City Church kids. And at 7.30 on Wednesday, we have the opportunity to chat to some people from our City Church family. Thursday is Pray and Praise Night at 7.30 and on Friday is Youth Online at 7.30. If you need further information, check in with our Facebook page and our Instagram page and the website. Brilliant, well done Alison. That's a lot going on guys for us <laughs> in the week. And uh, just before we go, we just want to pray God's blessing over you now in all that you are doing. Father, we thank you for this time together we thank you that we've been able to worship that we've been able to pray that we've been able to hear your word and we speak your blessing now as we go in jesus name we do thank you lord that you have given us a godly perspective that you have given us a greater perspective for life so we open up our hearts we open up our lives and our families to you now in jesus name amen god bless you all have a great week